to be able to play there and beat them at their home field. I mean, three times in a row. Um, I think they said that's never been done before, made history. And I mean, it's an old rivalry. You know, we had a lot of people there, um, um, old alumni there. You know, we had Wade there. You know, our LeBron was there on, the, on our side, too, at that. So, I mean, it was a, it was a great rivalry game. But, um, I mean, we got that win, and we're just moving up to the to the next team. Let's talk about that team you're playing because people would think about Duke as being, okay, it's just Duke. They're not going to be very good. Well, that's not true. I mean, they're yeah, probably the best team not. on that side. I definitely mean, how not. How big yeah. of a game is this? Definitely. It's a, it's a big game. I mean, we got to play, I mean, definitely for, from experience and from the past, we can't look over any teams. We can't, we have to treat every team like it's a national championship and just play FSU ball. I mean, it's a great team. They only lost two games. They're having one of the best seasons they have in a, had in a while. So, um, it's great. It's our homecoming game. They're coming here home um, to our. It's, it's always great to play here at home and to be able to play them. It's an ACC game, so that that makes it even a better game. So we just have to treat it like it's a national championship game. I mean, they're a great team, and we're definitely not going to look past them or or downgrade them. We know they're a great team. And they're the kind of team that maybe in the past couple of years you could say, oh, they they got a they got a pretty good offense and they can yep. move the ball. But their defense is equally as good this year. How mm -hmm. much of a challenge is it for you guys to come off a rivalry game and to be able to play this kind of team, but still be at your very best? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I think that's going to help us out as a team. You know, um, week in, week out. I mean, playing tough teams is going to be like that um, towards the end of the season. You know, we have great teams like that too. So, I mean, to be able to um, come off of a Miami game, which is which is a great rivalry game, which was a great game, and then to be able to come and play a tough defense game, um, that Duke, uh, tough defense like Duke has, that's going to be that's going to be a challenge. But that's a challenge that we're up for, and that's a challenge that's going to help our team out mentally and physically. How much does it help that you are back at home too? Because I think, I mean, I think we would say even from looking at the season, mm -hmm. you all play better here. You yeah. like it better. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, I do. I mean, we all do. I mean, it's always better to play here at home. I mean, we have a great fan base. I mean, teams. I mean, even when we go away. I mean, the NC State game. You know, the Miami game. I mean, even like not bringing up last year, but even the Gators game last year, I mean, you could always hear our fans no matter where we go. I mean, our fans are, we have a great fan base. But here at home, it's, it's nothing like being here, um, here at the Doak. So, like, it's just loud, it's crazy, and I mean, it's, it's always fun. And it's, on top of that, your family, everybody's family is here, and it's the homecoming. So, we definitely could just go out there and be able to show out and have fun. Even though you, you did get the win, some, some bad news, obviously. What was yeah. it like for, I mean, because. Number one, I mean, people that are on the opposite side of the ball, you're all good friends anyway, but this thing, mm -hmm. this guy's in your seg. He's one of your guys. Yep. How tough was it to, for you to hear about it? I mean, it, it was it was hard for him to be out for the season. You know, he's like he's like a big brother to all of us. I mean, he taught me, um, all the running backs, me, Freeman, um, everybody, everything we know out there on the field as as a running back. And um, for him to go down is, is definitely devastating. But, I mean, he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot with his back twice, his wrist, and um, now his ACL. But he's a, he, he has high spirits. He, he he's a he's a great guy and uh, he's a leader on and off the field. I mean, he came today. Even even right after he got hurt, he was in the locker room smiling, telling us, "Look, we got to pick it up. We got to come out here. We got to get this win." And us as running backs, we prayed. You know, we got together and was like, "Look, we're gonna hold it down for um, we're gonna hold it down for Chris." I mean, CT four. We put it on our um, wristbands. We were gonna hold this. We didn't know it was gonna be a season injury, but um, now that we found out, we was like, "Look, we got to hold it down for him." And he came to practice today, smiling, um, right, getting everybody crunk today. He came to the meetings today with high spirits, and he's not one of those guys that's selfish. Like, my season's over. I'm not. It's no need for me to come to practice or to the meetings no anymore. He's out there still leading us and coaching us. We always looked at him as a coach. But I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely devastating. It's very devastating to be able to lose a leader like that. But I mean. We, we have great backs to be able to come in and fill the shoes. What does it do for you all having him be there no, and not really you see him like he doesn't miss a beat. I mean, the only thing he doesn't do is practice and playing the game. He's yep. still there doing it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely. I mean, you can look at you can look at some guys that's selfish like, look, you know, I'm hurt, man. It's, it's not doing anything for me. I'm just going to focus on my grades. And I, I mean, he's not that type of guy. He's a team first. He's like, look, I want to help my team reach our goals. You know, I'm going to go out there and coach. The younger backs that we have, um, me and Freeman, and I'm going to go out there and be there physically to be able to tell them from a running back um, standpoint what to do and what not to do. And he's a leader off the field on top of that. So, I mean, it's great to have him there. I mean, looking at other people, you could have other people would just not even come at all. So, I mean, that, that definitely tells something about his personality. No matter what, you and Freeman were going to get a lot of carries this year. You're going to have a good rotation, but now it's different. I mean, now mm -hmm. it's 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 you, it's Lonnie, it's it's Devonte. How big of a role is this now for you stepping into the field? It's, de it's, it's definitely a big role. We have to we have to step up now. You know, I mean, Coach always said, look, he always puts a sound like, look, your opportunity, wait for your opportunity, wait for your opportunity. When your opportunities comes, you you better be ready. You better be ready. So, I mean, we didn't want an opportunity to be like this with Chris going down for opportunity to come out and shine, but it's our chance to 
come out here and show coach that we're ready and that what he was saying wasn't going through one ear and out the other. Is this almost like a, this is we want to dedicate the rest of the season to Chris? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely de um, dedicating the rest of the season to Chris. I mean, we told him that before, and for the rest of for the rest of the year, I'm putting on our wristbands and stuff like that. CT4. I mean, he taught me everything here at the college level, what to do on the field and what not to do, and just like help me out. I mean, everything I do out there is what Chris pretty much taught me. So, I mean, definitely dedicating the season to CT4.